I mean, most of the people come from other communities. And I think that that's part of the survival of small town now, is I think that's been a hard lesson for rural areas to learn is, you know, back in the day, rural communities were self-sufficient and you had your local community to support you. Now, most people go to Council Bluffs or Omaha to go shopping or work in our Council Bluffs. So that's a cool tourist thing, like a way to bring people to the town that are from. Oh, yeah. Other areas. The music, then. also the you know when they recognize a, a band's name and then they see Malvern, it's, right? Uh, it, it pulls in a different audience, and and when you think regionally, you have a lot bigger audience to pull from too. And so I, it's always right. I always get excited when I see new faces and people that I don't see. That tells me you know we're doing something right. Zach Jones is an artist turned event organizer in Malvern, Iowa. Malvern is a small town in southwest iowa that puts on a variety of events that bring a lot of people to the town one of the reasons that i wanted to interview him was because being from a small rural area myself i know the impact that events can have on those spaces bringing people into the town showing people what it's like giving people more reasons to come and spend money there this can be essential to local economic development zach jones has really done, done a lot in malvern to keep things alive uh, and really feeling alive with the art that's there so in this episode we talk to zach and have him share some of the reasons he thinks events are important and some of the ways that he gets people to come to events uh, out in Malvern, Iowa. EventVesta is a simple yet powerful tool for event organizers. With EventVesta, you can post your upcoming events to event calendars all through your city on the most popular websites without spending hours on each doing it manually. Get hours worth of marketing done for your events in five minutes or less with EventVesta. Check out how EventVesta can help your business today by checking out vesta.fun slash podcast. Thank you, Zach, for, for joining us. I am excited to have you on, and uh, I want to just start out by giving you an opportunity to, first of all, I just want to call out how beautiful your background is. If you're not watching this on video, <laughs> you definitely should yeah. hop over to the YouTube channel <laughs> to, to check out uh, the beautiful art church that, that Zach's sitting inside of. Um, I'm going to give you a second to just introduce yourself. You know, who are you and, and what are some of the things you, you do? I know you do a lot, but... Yeah, yeah. I, uh, my name is Zach Jones. I'm from Malvern, Iowa, originally from Malvern, Iowa. Uh, when I was in my young 20s, I moved to Arizona to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And and while I was down there, I, I knew I, was, I wanted to do something in the creative realm. Uh, I ended up going to the art store, bought some paint, fell in love with it. Eventually, I uh, met uh, what I refer to as my mentor in Cave Creek, Arizona, uh, Sergio Ladrone de Guevara, and uh, trained with him for a, oh, about three years and Got to the point where I'd been in Arizona for 11 years. I wanted a studio, and I had this dream of moving back to my hometown, buying an old Main Street building, living upstairs, and having a studio gallery downstairs. And So I moved back in 2006, and I didn't get an old Main Street building. I bought an old church instead. So And it was the reverse. I lived downstairs, and then uh, that <laughs> became my studio, uh, creative space. You now have quite a few spaces there in Malvern um, and also are closely tied into the community. Yeah, yeah, it's it's growing. And my friends, you know, they're always cracking jokes at me. Uh, you know, what what am I going to buy next, which is a little bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> not it's not exactly what it seems but uh yeah i just uh, was able to buy a property right next door to the art church uh, that's going to be called or is called uh, art house and it's an airbnb three bedroom uh and along with the art church i'm also getting into weddings as you know and uh, hosting mm -hmm. small weddings it's a small wedding venue of you know around 75 people or less and uh, so then that plays into the art house being a, an additional property next door and not listening to the neighbor's dogs bark and the cars coming and going and the lawn that doesn't get mowed. So kind of fixing up that property. And then right down that same alleyway is Studio 414 in Empress Garden. And uh, it has an outdoor green space. It's on Main Street. It's a small square footage, maybe 400 square feet. But all three properties, it's art is in the forefront. And whether it's murals on the walls, uh, I also do oil paintings. And uh, and then there will be some other artists that I'll rotate in there as well. Uh, some friends and, and uh, other medias other than painting. I get tired of looking at my own my own stuff. 
uh, but the art. Yeah, well, it's nice to be, well with it. Yeah, it's nice to be able to collaborate with other art and showcase other artists too. Yeah, it's it's cool because Malvern is. I'm from a very small town in Western Pennsylvania. Malvern, for those of you that don't know, is a very small town in what is that western iowa yeah southwest 1200 people yeah it's small but when you drive through malvern you notice the amount of art there or you go into the cafe there's a giant mural on the wall like it adds a sense of character or it exemplifies the character that's already there too it kind of uh calls attention to it because a lot of the inspiration is you know either buildings that were there or nature that's around there yeah um, so i think that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely tapped into like with part of the revitalization is historical preservation combined with the art, and that's with the with the art church that plays very well together. Uh, especially with an Airbnb, it's the church was built in 1873, so you know that's before electricity, and <laughs> uh, the windows are the lighting. You know, so it's like these. Uh, 12 gothic 11 foot tall windows it has great natural light which is great for you know a studio space uh, but it also they build it for a coop for music you know and and uh, so i've had concerts up here and the music sounds great and it's it's really a per- perfect fit for what i'm using it for to repurpose it too to give it a second chance because the, the upstairs was last used as a church in 1969 wow so the upstairs sat vacant until I bought it in 2012. So I, I was like, how can a space this beautiful just sit empty for 40 years? You know, basically my lifetime at that point. Yeah. And uh, so to be able to, you know, kind of go back to what it was originally built for, bringing people together and, and concerts and art shows, and then people can stay in it and, and uh, have, have a, an experience. So tell me a, a little bit about, just for the listeners, about a couple of the events that you've, I know you've done a lot of different concerts and stuff, but you have, you work on the um, concert, the community concert series in the summer too. Yeah. What, what are some of those? The the Malvern uh, concert series, it's, it's uh, give or take a week. It's generally uh, mid-June to mid-August, uh, 10 consecutive weeks on Saturdays, uh, 6.30 to 9.30. It's right on Main Street. It's half a block down the hill from the art church, right across the road from the art house. And uh, we do an assortment of music. Uh, I mean, from the Prairie Gators to Chris Logger, we get some great music, some music out of Kansas City, uh, out of Lawrence, Kansas, Bluegrass. And and so that's kind of the goal is to mix up the music. But it's a free concert. Malvern Bank sponsors music. I organize it with uh, Rick Hilliard, which is, he's a musician, but has been in the game a lot longer, so he can kind of steer me and give me feedback, and and Mm. we, you know, kind of go from year to year and figure out what worked and what to change, and and, uh, the the sad thing is there's only 10 weeks, and there's a lot of musicians out there, so I always feel like I'm, you know, hurting someone's feelings, (laughs) but it's like you... Yeah. (laughs) uh, But, yeah, but it's it's really... uh, you know, I, I say Malvern's a little slice of Mayberry because uh, we've got some good quality music. We've got some good public art. We have these metal trees that are sculpted that are downtown. And the music, it's Main Street is basically two blocks long, the majority of it. And so when there's live music downtown, it's like it kind of lights up the downtown. And it's free. It, yeah. Bring, you know, bring your cooler, bring uh, your lawn chair or blanket and and uh a lot of people go to the classic cafe right next door they get bombarded yeah the 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 one that i saw that was during right after our wedding uh my wife and i got married at the art church there and then uh i mean it was it seemed like pretty much the whole town there which i guess like well what's what's what is uh you know for me i'm from here and i'm always shocked at how many people don't show up from from Malvern. Sure. I mean, most of the people yeah. come from other communities. So, and I think that, that Oh, really? Really? Okay. That's part of the survival of small town now is I think that's been a hard lesson for rural areas to learn is, you know, back in the day, rural communities were self-sufficient and you had your local community to support you. Now, you know, most people go to Council Bluffs or Omaha to go shopping or work in our mm. council bluffs so that's a cool tourist thing like our way to bring people to the town that are from oh yeah other areas the music then. also the you know when they recognize a, a band's name and then they see Malvern, right. it's it, it pulls in a different audience and 
and uh, and when you think regionally, you have a lot bigger audience to pull from too. And so I, it's always, right. I always get excited when I see new faces and people that I don't see. That tells me, you know, we're doing something. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So what was the initial, like, inspiration behind why start start that? So when I moved back in 2006, it's basically you would have to drive to Omaha for entertainment mm. or Council Bluffs. And, and uh, like, why can't we do that here? It's like, especially, you know, if you have a couple beers and it's like driving, you know, yeah, yeah. 40 miles or more. It's like, uh, so, and also, you know, this is where I work and where I create. I Part of the idea as an artist is to be self-sufficient and picking up and packing up and moving your stuff every week uh, is exhausting. It takes a lot of time. Things get damaged. And uh, so I was really set on Malvern being my, my showcase and bringing people here rather than me having to move all over the place. And over the over time, you know, that consistency, people know that Zach is in Malvern and Zach's art is in Malvern. And uh, so my first show was in 2006. And there was a classic cafe, which is now the classic cafe at the time was Lottie Dot. It was a couple that had a little coffee shop. And and a limited menu, but it was a big space. And the brick windows had kind of an old market feel to it. And in the back area, it was more of an industrial warehouse that they didn't really utilize. So that became my initial studio space where I did some classes, uh, did more uh, more studio space. Uh, but I got to the point where it's like, okay, I'm back. I need to do a show. And I had a musician friend from Arizona, Eddie Elliott, that was traveling through the summer. He'd do go on tour and I'm like, well, swing through Malvern. And, and so I did an art show and then coupled it with uh, a concert with Eddie Elliott. And we, we had, I'm guessing 200 people packed in the, the cafe, which was great to see. Uh, but you know, it's, it also feels like, especially with small towns, you can't do just one thing. You have to combine things to make it more interesting and really mm -hmm. try to exceed people's expectations. And so the music combined with the art, uh, you know, there's, it just pulls more people. It's a bit, it creates a, a unique environment and, uh, and it's art, you know, in the forefront. I think that that's an overlooked factor for people everywhere that are putting on events. Like, I think it kind of becomes, if you're in New York or something, it's easy to just be like, wow, just like have a band play. I'll have another band play. I'll have another band play. Or like when I used to live yeah. in Pittsburgh or Austin or something, but the ones that really stand out are the ones that combined uh, I mean, that's what like made South by Southwest so unique is like, it's not just music. It's really cool music, but also really cool art, installation art, interactive things like, you know, being able to, you know, there's a, a sense of, you feel like you have to do that in Malvern, but yeah. it does, it just makes it a better event regardless of where it's at, uh, which is cool. Cause that yeah. can dry, that can draw people to Malvern, uh, versus going and seeing another show at a bar in, in Omaha or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is the goal is, again, I always say it's to try to exceed people's expectations. And, and so then when there is an event and if I'm tied to it, you know, hopefully it's, you know, people are going to be like, okay, it's going to be good if if he's doing it. Uh, but, you know, it's, again, it's in small towns. So it's like there's no rhyme or reason anyone that does events knows. Like all of a sudden everyone shows up one night and yeah. then the next time you great entertainment and you think that okay that's this is going to be awesome and you know 25 30 people show yep <laughs> so it's uh you know i i didn't i didn't get into this to be an event planner i've kind of done it by necessity and i'm learning as i go and there's definitely tools out there that i don't utilize uh i'm kind of old-fashioned and the fact that it's a lot of grassroots and, mm -hmm. and uh, word of mouth and repeat 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 <laughs> yeah do you feel that testimonials go. do you feel that the word of mouth is like that factor of trying to make sure that people have a unique experience is what drives that word of mouth yeah yeah absolutely yeah i mean when somebody goes out of their way to talk about something they did last weekend or something you know they stayed at this place or they did you know if they're talking about it and then hopefully it's in a positive light uh, that's the best advertising you can get. Right. I mean, you can you can see things in the paper, ads that pop up on your social media, and it just becomes wallpaper after a while. But when your 
friend or relative tells you, oh man, you need to go check this out. We had a great time and, and you got to see this. It's like, that goes a lot further than yeah. the typical. Sure. Ad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even the best social media is that is fans telling other fans or, or people telling other people about, yeah. uh, about things that they love. Um, shifting gears yeah. here just a little bit. I, I just am curious what your thoughts are on, on what makes like why events? What, what do you think that is, uh, special about like bringing people together with events and why is that important? I think it's a energy level. That's, uh, it's like, why, why would you, and I've done this before, so this might be an artist thing, but it's like the difference of, you know, going on vacation by yourself or having others join you. It's like a shared experience. And it's also, there's an energy level that happens where there's more people together. You know, if you're a concert goer, you've been at that show where there's just something mm -hmm. in the air and everybody's on the same page and sharing, having that same shared experience. And you can't really explain it. It's more of a spiritual thing. And that's where I think it's like, if you can tap into that, uh, you know, you don't have to try to sell it. It's, it's more of a feeling. It's something that you feel like you need to take part in or you want to take part in because it's good for your soul. It feels good. I love that. <laughs> so from uh, your perspective and, and the kind of stuff that you do, which, which do you think is, is harder, the organizing the events or promoting the events? Um, I spend most of my time promoting it. Mm. Uh, organizing is like, you know, again, I'm small town and I'm an amateur. I consider myself an amateur at this. I'm getting better, but it's like, you know, the, the last minute organizing details are like <laughs> sure the last minute details. <laughs> it's like, I want to get people there. I got to make sure people are coming first. And then it's like, okay, now I got to shift over to this. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not going to call myself a one man band, but you know, my, my family and they get roped into a lot of these things that I do, but family and a few friends, but it's, it's a small group of us that, that do these things. And, uh, so I, I would say a lot more goes into the promoting to get people. And then it's, you know, and, and there's room for me to improve. You know, I, that was something I was thinking about, uh, just yesterday with this Malvern concert series is, you know, some, some things that make the experience a little bit nicer and, you know, more shade and more, mm, yeah. you know, some other vendors that play off of the, the concert series, whether it's, you know, food and that sort of thing. Uh, because the classic cafe, they have so many people that we need other, yeah, you know, other food <laughs> options. That's a good problem to have. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you're if you're listening to this, you should come check out the wherever you're at. You should go to Mal the Malvern uh, Community Series concert, concert series. series. It's on Facebook. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing going. And if you live really uh, far away, you can come stay at one of uh, Zach's Airbnbs. Yeah. Yep. Yep, just contact me. Yep, I've got the art church downstairs. Is it's cool. It's the downstairs. The art church started off as my studio living quarters, so it has its own. People think it's like they think of an old church basement, and they think of the potluck and a little dated. But it's it's been brought up to speed for the most part. But it's full of art, and and one of the walls is painted on, and and definitely has the eclectic uh, concrete counters and a little bit of an industrial art feel to it. But then I, I tell people the upstairs, it's not really included with the Airbnb, but I don't mind if people come up here and check it out or, you know, basically I don't want them to rent the Airbnb and host a party. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's yeah. My, you got to pay extra for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah. We, we had a great wedding there, so it is a cool space for for an event. Uh, I mean, gorgeous. The energy there is amazing. Uh, yeah, that's what attracted me to it. It's yeah. like when I was in there, it was June, and there was no AC and these big windows. It's like kind of the greenhouse effect, and mm -hmm. I uh, I wanted to use it for a art project because it was big open space, good light. Uh, but I was sweating bullets, uh, but I still fell in love with the space just because. Uh, you know, it has the big high ceilings, 27 foot high ceilings and everything gets amplified. So the birds outside tweeting, it's like they're in the room with you. And yeah. It just has a really uh, peaceful and I, I tell people it's a social space. When people come in here, they find a reason to stick around and, and keep 
keep visiting and and if you look around there's always smiles on people's faces so i i there is something special about the the old church yeah absolutely all right zach i am gonna let you just uh if if people want to find some of the stuff you're working on where can they do that your best bet okay so another event that i started and i've handed off as a southwest iowa art tour and our slogan oh, cool. connecting communities uh, through art and the hoff center and council bluffs is part of that um then the Har- is it harvester lofts uh but southwest iowa the southwest iowa art tour and that's on uh, facebook along with the malvern concert series mid-june to mid-August, uh, 6.30 to 9.30, uh, Malvern Concert Series. And then as far as contacting me or more questions, uh, you can go to Art Church on uh, Facebook or ZJ Paintings. And I'm also on Instagram too. So Art Church, might be Art Church Iowa and uh, ZJ Paintings. Awesome. Thanks so much, Zach. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been fun. Cool. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Event Promoter Podcast. Event Promoter Podcast is brought to you by Event Vesta. Check out Event Vesta at info.eventvesta.com. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, we'd love a rating. Tell us how the show has been for you. If you leave a comment uh, when you rate us on Apple Podcasts, we'll make sure to shout that out in one of the future episodes. If you have any questions for me as an event promoter or for one of our guests we can bring those up uh, on those calls thanks for listening and make sure to share this with other event promoters that you think this would be helpful for bye